What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto USA and today we are going to be discussing something that is always controversial uh, and that is does the exposed dome make a difference versus a flat front light make a difference? And so I'm going to keep everything in the test that we're going to do. We're going to use two modifiers. We're going to use a beauty dish. Um, one of the modifiers that I personally have always thought that a dome uh, a dome to light benefits from the most. We're going to test it. <clears throat> and we're also going to test another hard reflector that's pretty popular, and that's the original Magnum reflector. The uh, You can tell it's the original because it's larger. Uh, it's got the dimpled uh, reflective finish on the inside as opposed to like the squares that the OCF Magnum has. Uh, but we're going to try both of these. We're going to put them both to the test. So the, the dome, no dome <clears throat> argument has gone back and forth a whole lot. Um, I personally went to Sweden and hung out with Andrea Beluso and uh, Joe Levine, and we were photographing. We had a model, a whole bunch of modifiers. We did dome, no dome. And honestly, for me, with a lot of them, I couldn't tell the difference. So, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to take the photos. I'm not going to tell you which flash I'm using that has a dome on it and which flash doesn't have the dome on it. We're using two B1Xs. Uh, Everything's going to be set the exact same on them, so uh, it should be pretty easy to tell whether it makes a difference or not. Uh, we're going to show you the photos, obviously, when we photograph them, and we're going to compare them side by side. But I'm also going to put them in the comments after the live is over with. That way you can go back and you can look at them and see if you can uh, see the higher res file, see if you can tell a difference between whether or not uh, the photo is photographed with a modifier that is utilizing the dome versus a modifier that is not utilizing the dome. So, like I said, not going to tell you which one's which, but that's what we're going to do. So let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I want to make sure that uh, I am good in the comments game right now. Let's see what's up. Cool. Sweet. So, like I said, we're going to start this off pretty simply. I've got a B1X. Uh, one of them has a dome, one of them does not have a dome. Once again, I'm not going to tell you which one it is. So uh, we're going to start it off with a beauty dish. Uh, the interior finish of this beauty dish is white. I would turn around and show it to you, but that might tell you whether or not this had the dome on it or did not have the dome on it, and I'm going to keep that under lock and key. So um, we're going to rock it out. So let's get the light set up with the beauty dish. I'm going to have Kate come in here. We're going to photograph Kate's face. With, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think we're about I think we're about ready to rock and roll with this. Um, camera settings, just because everybody always likes to know what camera settings are, is uh, f8, one two fiftieth of a uh, one yeah one two hundred fiftieth of a second. Uh, ISO four hundred, just because I want to keep the flash power down a little bit lower for um, just battery consumption. Uh, they're fresh. They're running on fresh batteries, but. I just always like to do that to keep the battery consumption down low. Uh, shooting on a Fuji X-T3 um, with Profoto Connect on the top of it. Uh, and yeah, so we're going to rock and roll. I'll take the first shot in TTL mode. Okay. I'll just adjust the power from there. So here is the first shot of Caitlin. Let me back this up a little bit. There we go. Sorry, guys, I gotta set my camera up, especially since I keep kneeing it with my leg. <laughs> I'm a genius. So, if we go right here, Kate, first shot's TTL mode, just to see if we in the ballpark output wise. That looks great. Right off the jump, first shot. So, that's gonna set the power at 6.4, so I'm gonna lock it into manual mode so that power doesn't change. I'm going to. I'm going to take this flash off the camera. All right. I'm going to walk this direction with it because I don't need um, you to see which flash this one is. So move this one, turn it off so it does not affect the exposure. Take this one, install it. harder on myself than it needs to be just to do this, but I, I think it's a, um, 
I think it's a fun topic of discussion. A lot of people go back and forth between whether it makes a difference or not. I used to be in the camp that thought it made a difference. I have um, since left that camp. But we're going to see what you guys think, because that's always fun. So right back in here, Caitlin. So once again, who knows which one this is. And this could have a dome on it. This one may not have a dome on it. We don't know. <laughs> Shift this way just a little bit. There we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. So let's compare them side by side. Let's see if we even see anything right off the jump. So let's go these two shots. Oh, okay. you lost it, yeah. Could you? Oh, lost video to my. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. I wonder if I accidentally turned it off. Hang on a second, guys. I might have. Let's see. Makes it hard to see first. Yeah, it makes it hard to see what yeah, we're yeah. doing if you can't actually. <laughs> if this thing's not actually running. Let's go. Let's... What you got for me? Hmm. This is weird. It's not turning on. I might have to just run along HDMI cable real fast just to okay. get this sucker going. I don't know why it decided that it wants to be angry, but it is mad. All right, cool. Give me just a second, party people. I just need to run a cable to my laptop so you guys can actually see this thing, because or else this doesn't make a bit of difference uh, in showing you guys this stuff. So let me. I'm actually going to move my laptop over closer to where I can get plugged into. My switcher, give me three seconds, party peeps. We'll do this. I just need an HDMI cable out of the toolbox. Alrighty. <clears throat> it's always fun when uh, you know, stuff goes awry, but it's cool. It keeps us on our feet, keeps us, keeps us young and spry. Let's see what we got going on here. So we're just going to plug it in directly. And this should give us a picture again. Cool. All right. Just, sorry. Thanks for giving us a right, Bill? So here we go. Plugged in. Back in action. Should be popping up. Oh, I see something happening. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to jump back in front of here while we're making sure that we have, it looks like we have video. Hold on one second. Cool. So, we're just getting all this stuff set up. And I'm going to see, I see some comments. So, we're going to talk about them. Uh, can bees have no, seen a noticeable difference with very large reflectors, like a para, uh, but not with the Beauty Dish or Magnum? Curious what your test will show. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've... Um, Whenever I do ha have done the test myself, I personally haven't seen a ton of difference. But it's just one of those things that I hear all the time. People, you know, going back and forth whether or not um, it makes a huge difference. And and honestly, I don't think it does. But I'm gonna let you guys decide whether you think it does or not. So, are we back in business? We are back in business. Cool. So. We move this B1X out of the way so I can stand here at my laptop. Maybe you can half see me uh, while I look at this stuff. Sorry, my laptop power cord out from under the wheel. That would be awful. Perfect. So, these two shots right here. Let's, uh, I'm actually going to spread this up so it goes side, more side by side. One of these shots was shot with a dome. One of these shots was shot without a dome. Um, I see a little bit, just difference-wise, I see a little bit as far as output. Uh, so one of them is a little bit darker than the other one. Uh, obviously, this one right here on the right is a little bit darker than this one here on the left. So that's interesting. So uh, one of them seems to be a touch more efficient. Let's see, in the shadows, I don't really see... Let's get the loop going. In the shadows, I don't really see much of a difference as far as like the feathering of the edge of the shadow at the line of demarcation. They look really similar. So let's see right here where the light and the shadow meet. Right here where the light and the shadow meet. This shadow may be a little bit smoother, but it could also be from uh, just subject and light placement whenever I changed out the light. They're pretty similar. I'm not gonna lie. They're uh, catch light in the eye. Looks like a beauty dish. 
Catch light in the eye, looks like a beauty dish. Let's check here. Catch light in the eye, looks like a beauty dish. Catch light looks almost the exact same. I think the, the, the big difference is just, once again, uh, this one, the, sh the flash that I use with this shot right here is a little more efficient. So it, um, it's obviously a little, bit, a little bit brighter. But as far as the actual characteristics of the light, I don't think I see anything. Let me see if you guys, I'm going to ask if you guys see anything. Uh, hey, Ted. Hey, man, thanks. Thank you. I hope you're having a killer Friday, too, man. Uh, photo by Fridays in the house from Rhode Island. What's up, dude? Um, Steven from England. What's up, brother? Always good to see you from across the pond. And then the Caribbean. Richard, take me to where you are. I need to be in the Caribbean right now. Thanks for hanging out with me, man. Um, cool. So that was awesome. So once again, I am not going to tell you which one was which. Um, I think maybe... Uh, like later, like next week, I'll chime back in and, and let you know. Or maybe we'll just talk about it next week on the live. I'll pull it up. Yeah. Um, I'll pull it back up before we go live with everything else, and I'll let you know what the difference, which one was which. And it may surprise you, it may not surprise you. So we'll see. So I'm going to take this light down and walk off this camera once again so you don't see um, the difference or see which flash I'm using. So for this one, I'm going to the Magnum Reflector. Uh, and just so you know, I'm using the OG Magnum Reflector because it was when it was originally designed, it was designed for uh, use with um, you know, our domed lights. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I keep this um, all the same. So I'm going to put this at a um, setting of 8 on my... Let's see, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it on the flash. I'm going to zoom it to something more pointed. I kind of want something with a hot spot. So let me put my uh, modeling lamp on, and I'm going to zoom it to something that's a little more pointed, so it's probably a little more diffused out. So let's go all the way to 8. So that looks pretty good. I like the hot spot look. So sweet. So we're using a regular old-school Magnum reflector, uh, the big boy that was designed with our pro heads and our acute heads and the compacts way before we went to the flat front with the D1. And we're going to take a shot with this one. Once again, I'm not going to tell you which one I'm using, which is the point of being blind in your decision and, and making this thing. So, Kate, can I get you back up in here? You got it. Sweet. So, I'm just going to use the, the uh, modeling lamp to get the light right where I want it. I'm going to blind Caitlin for a split second. Yep, super blind. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You guys are blind as to what we're using. She's absolutely physically blind. So we're good there. So uh, because I changed the modifier and this one's way more efficient, I'm going to jump back into TTL mode for a split second just to get the um, exposure set. So boom. Perfect exposure. So um, that looks so cool. So it dropped the power down like three stops, which is just a testament to the efficiency differences between like a magnum reflector and a beauty dish so it's pretty cool so once again i'm gonna stay at 3.6 gonna change the flash out not gonna tell you what we're using we're at a zoom setting of eight so we're at the most pointed um the most pointed light pattern that the uh, magnum reflector gives you at least from the um at least ow, sorry <laughs> um at least from the uh the card that's on the top of the magnum reflector that lets you know um, how much, uh, what the light pattern is. Uh, it, I think we did a live on that. Maybe we have, maybe we need to do a live on, on the little cheat sheet that Profoto puts on top of the, the cards. But if, you, if you've never seen this thing before, so on the top of almost all of our hard reflectors, and we call them hard reflectors because they're made out of metal, not because of the light quality, uh, the beauty dish falls in our hard reflector line. And it's more of a, it's, technical name for it. It's a soft light reflector. So they all have a sticker like this that kind of lets you know that at a, a zoom setting of 8, which is 8 on the scale of the side of the flash, that I'm at 35 degrees output and at 4 I'm at 50 degrees. So it, it kind of gives you a cheat sheet as to what the numbers on the side of the flash mean when you're zooming. So we're at 8. I know that last shot was shot at a power level of 3.6, so I'm going to power down to 3.6 just so everything is nice and fair. I'm going to point this right back at Kate, and then we're going to take a shot. Here we go. 3, 2, 1. 
Boom. So, cool, sweet. I'm gonna push this out of the way so we can chitty chat. You're good, Kate. Thank All you right. so much. Right on. Get this camera out of the way. Sweet. So, I'm gonna try to, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna try to sneak this thing over a little bit closer so we can talk and I can look at these photos with you characters. That should be super good. Am I good right here? Am I back in it? Perfect. So let's go side by side with the Magnum Reflector and see what we see. So this was the first shot uh, with the Magnum Reflector. Uh, good exposure. Uh, let's see, the shadows should be relatively hard line because it's a it's a harder reflector it is the one difference that you're going to find with something like Mag a magnum reflector is really really good especially if you want to replicate sunlight um the one thing that it's harder to do with a magnum reflector is get a super crisp shadow line and it's just because of the size of it it's it's a larger reflector um like i always talk about my cranium to reflector size and i have a big dome which means this dome is pretty big so um it doesn't quite give you the sharp line. The upside though is because it's so efficient, you can actually back it up a lot further and make that light source look a little bit smaller and uh, start you know, getting a little more definition in that shadow line. So this one is a little more feathered just because I was using it relatively close to Kate. Um, we were probably four or five feet away. So let's see. So shadow line, pretty crisp. Uh, like I said, it's got a little bit of feathering. Uh, that you can see there. And let's go over here to the same shadow uh, with the other B1X that may or may not have a dome on it, who knows? I'm not gonna tell you until next week. Uh, and it looks a little more rigid, honestly. Uh, it uh, may be a touch less feathered. I feel like, um, especially like, I wish I could like, oh, you know what I can do? I can zoom in. Here we go and go to like right here, I feel like there is a little bit of feathering between the shadow. I could be wrong. I could just be seeing something uh, weirdly. Let's see. But let's zoom into the other shot too. And around the same area. I might need to zoom in a little. That went too far. There we go. So shadow-wise, I mean, it's, it's got a little bit of feather to it. So I can't say that they're totally a ton different. But I would say that Actually, this line looks a little bit sharper on this B1X versus uh, this one right here, where it, it, once again, the, the line of demarcation is a little more feathered. Um, so that's kind of cool. Let's see up here around like the nose. Sorry for the extreme close up on your nose, Caitlin. Um, but, you know, it's taking one for the team. Uh, this line, this the, the feathering here looks a little more. Um, a little less contrasty, like it, it tapers a little nicer. This one's kind of more like a spot. Um, but for the most part, I don't think the shots are terribly different. Other than, once again, I see uh, an exposure difference. Uh, obviously this one here, which was the first light that we used with the um, with the B1X, is showing uh, a little bit more output than the other B1X. And it's a direct correlation. So this one right here was the exact same B1X that we used for the very first shot of with the beauty dish, which was a little, uh, had a little more output on the exposure. And then once again, this one right here was the second shot that we used with the beauty dish that was a little, uh, little lower on the exposure. So it, between the two lights at the exact same power setting, uh, one of the two is more efficient on the output and one of them is less efficient on the output. So, um, that's kind of cool. Let's see if you guys have any comments. Hey guys, Joseph Ford, what's up in the house? Enrique from Washington, D.C., what is up? Uh, Fabio, I think it's kind of interesting too, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. Susan from Seattle, holy smokes, you guys are the best. Um, and Rehoboth Beach, Delaware with Sam in the crib. What's up, dude? Good to see you. Hopefully you guys are getting some cool information out of this. It's, uh, I always think it's a really, really fun... Uh, experiment to run. Like I said, I've, I've done this uh, before with uh, a friend of mine, Andrea Beluso, in, in uh, Sweden. We just went back and forth all day looking at different modifiers. And really, when it come, came down to it, we couldn't tell a lot of the differences that people swear that they see uh, when it comes to 
whether you should use a dome or the flat front makes a difference. And really, the only thing that I'm seeing, let's go check out the catch light because we did that with the um, with the beauty dish. The catch light looks good. I see kind of the ring of the flash because it's in, inserted into the magnum a little bit more. So you can actually see a little bit of an outline of the flash. Let's see here. Uh, I still see I still see some of the edge of the flash, the the ring not as much so with this, but the catch lights are very similar. Let me see if I can just zoom into the catch light and then maybe you guys can just see the catch light side by side. Let me pop back out so it's not so like digitized. There we go. So the catch light is pretty dang similar. Um, let's try to pull it out so it's not too pixelated. There you go. So the catch light is pretty similar. Uh, so that's kind of cool. A lot of the shadow uh, details, which are a lot of the things that you're going to notice uh, that make you know that make a light look a lot different, whether it tapers a little more even or you know whether it, it kind of blocks itself out. Those those details are incredibly similar. Sorry, I'm having a, a manic zooming issue. Let's see, it's just my hands. I'm like freaking out. Um, so really, for me, when it comes down to what it comes down to, I just see an exposure difference. And let's use Let's use um, the slider and see what the output difference is. Come here. So exposure difference, if I wanted to try to match them up. Looks like it's about you know, a little less than a half a stop. So it's not, one of them is not terribly more efficient, but it's you know, somewhere between a quarter and a half a stop. So you know the nice thing is you can make up a little bit more room with your light. Uh, like I was saying earlier too, that efficiency is nice when you're using a battery powered flash because you can get that power down lower and you have more shots on a charge, which is great. So, you know, I'm at three points with, with the last one is at 3.6 on the B1X. That's a stop and a half up from its lowest power, I think. So at two, you're shooting two watt seconds. So that right there with the Magnum reflector was shooting at about 10 watts of light output which is kind of impressive on a 500 watt flash. So it's really, really low power. And the, that's kind of the beauty of the magnum reflector. It just takes that light, bumps it way up, and you can keep the, you can keep the flash output super low. So cool. Hopefully that was some cool information. Um, like I said, looking at the two images, they look really similar. Um, let's actually, you know, I was looking at the JPEGs real fast out of my camera. Let's look at them side by side with the raw files. I don't know why I clicked on the, the JPEGs. So still pretty similar once again um just double check the shadows make sure i'm not out of my mind tapers really nicely tapers really nice hold on a second let's see this this is what i want to see this is what i thought i saw a while ago and it's actually not as bad as i thought it was so i see um the transition's a little smoother here on this one it's not quite as smooth right here but it's still not bad it's just something that I noticed. So it's it's almost, whereas this shadow right here tapers a little more naturally, right here, this almost looks like a double a double light shadow. So let's, oh my gosh, I apologize for my crazy zooming abilities, which apparently don't exist right now. Um, so this one I would say looks a little more double shadowy because it has, it almost has a line of demarcation and then another line of demarcation, whereas this light right here transitions a little smoother. I'm glad I checked the RAWs and went back and looked at this thing. I was looking at JPEGs, so the JPEGs probably didn't render exactly the, the things that I wanted to see. Let's go into the catch lights because we were talking about that. Let's see what we got. Let's go to the same eyeball. Let's go to the this gangly left eye right here. <laughs> I'll pay for that one later. Um, insanely similar. Insanely similar. I can't... You, you, it's incredible. I think that's kind of neat. So once again, really it comes down to there's an output difference. And let's go to this one and see if we can bump up that output with the raw and actually see if we can find the happy medium. If we go up a half a stop, they look pretty similar. So I'm going to say that it's about a half a stop power difference as far as uh, the efficiency goes between the two. So once again, this was a, a demonstration of whether or not this B1X has a dome on it or no dome. Uh, and we used two pretty popular modifiers, a Magnum Reflector and a Beauty Dish. The only thing that I could really tell with the Magnum Reflector is that maybe it can, one of the two can cast more of a, a double shadow. Uh, but honestly, 
people probably aren't paying attention to that stuff, so there's that. So hopefully that was cool information. I'm going to make sure you guys don't have any more questions before I sign out of this thing. Uh, okay, these, you've got, oh, you've got a dome with dome. Hey, I'll go check those out. I'll definitely go check those out. Thanks for the link, man. Um, gotcha, you got a better intended ring light effect with the dome. Sweet, awesome. Kevin from Dublin, what's up? And then uh, Rick, thanks for thanks for the level on this thing. So once again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and for kind of going through this. I know it's super anticlimactic because I'm not going to actually tell you what this stuff is right away because I want other people to come back and watch um, the video and and kind of come to a conclusion themselves before I do anything. But uh, We'll talk about it next week. We'll, I'll let you know which one was domed, which one wasn't domed, and that way you can see what's going on. So in the meantime, I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I don't see any more comments or any questions, so I'm going to get up out of this thing and, in, and enjoy the rest of my Friday as well. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'd love to answer them for you. If you have any more ideas for lives that you want to see, also I'm always trying to do something cool. So drop that in the comments as well, or shoot me a, a message on uh, Facebook Messenger, and we'll get it done, huh? Huh? Oh, uh, my, let's see, let me make sure my screen's not up right now. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Cool, so I just, my, my winners haven't come through the pipeline yet. Uh, I am going to choose my three winners, just be on, on the lookout for um, whether or not you uh, are getting an email from me. Uh, and you will, I'll send the swag to you. So, in the, yep, I don't have anything yet for my, for my dude who sends me the name. So, um, all good though. We'll have winners. People will get some stuff. Just be on the lookout for an email from this guy uh, about whether or not you won. So in the meantime, have an awesome weekend. Uh, let me know if I can help you with anything and peace out. I, I muted my audio.